Hi, welcome back to another Archicad speed modeling quick coffee tip. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and join the ASM tech base email list for newsletters and future updates. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this detailed swimming pool, like nice sweeping around pool tires. Look at this detail. It's really nice. Actually, there you go. You got obviously water in it. You got a stair and it is nice and right at the bottom. Everything is filled out. You can look at the section. That's all good. So let's get started and jump into it. I prepared this file to start with um, just a simple spline for our swimming pool shape. And the next step I did is I created a custom profile. So I'm going in here, I show you it's called a swimming pool wall. Go and edit. So all I did is get the shape like this. That's the wall and piece of the bottom. And you will see in a moment why I did not extend this. And up here I got a piece of cement and I got our pool tile, which is five, this is five millimeter. Okay, each of those pieces of hatching fill need to have an override surface. So I've got paint one, and I've got paint three and paint two. Okay, after you've drawn this, save it and get out of here. Make sure you save it as a wall, maybe as a beam, depending what you wanna use it with. Okay, so get out of here. I've got my shape. I like to use the wall for this. So I open the wall, go to this tool, and I choose my swimming pool wall. Take this out, and let's put this on wall's exterior. Click OK, and we use the magic wand tool. Make sure the settings are OK, you know, close enough. I've got at the moment deviation from curves, less than 20, and the best match. So we go down here, zoom in a bit, and you hold down your spacebar and you click. So let's see what we got for now. In 3D, we have this part of the swimming pool. As you can see, the bottom is not there at the moment, but the reason, as you probably noticed, is that I did not extend this in my profile because it's sweeping around, so I can't just draw the profile flat down here. It, it wouldn't fit around the curves. Okay, so that is looking good. You can zoom in, you got a nice round edge for your tile. So what we need to do is next, obviously we have to have also the cement showing around here, really. So you got the cutting, the tiles, and we have to add a bottom here and some slabs and we put a pool stair in. Okay, so next bit is then, and I, I need to create something that can cut this. So take this elevation or section and I want to move it so it is at the point where it's pretty much perpendicular. So let's move it again. Yeah, this is pretty much perpendicular to my curve. So if I open this now, I can zoom in here and you can see that's my profile as we saw before. And what I want to cut now is I wanted to cut Obviously, we make it larger here, but we got to cut there and we gotta cut all the way here. And I want to cut down, round, and up. So, for this, I use um, a morph. So, create this and we drag this from here. And it's just you just have to think where do I want to cut it. So, I want to cut it there, and you want to cut it down, and it can just go around. Just, you know, it just has to be bigger than your tile. There we go, there, and we go down. Oops, I went too far. No, it's all good. All right, let's move this up. I think for this, I need the other arrow tool. I don't really want this piece down here. I think just delete this one. Yeah, that's our piece of um, morph tool which I use as a cutting element. Now, the other bit is I want to make sure it's all connected exactly zero at the moment. I mean, zero, it's touching. So I want to have a bit of a gap. So what I do is I drag this X one plus and Y one plus. So there's a little bit of a gap in there. Okay. 
So that means I have to extend it slightly. We actually can go over. All right, see the gap might be a bit too big. You'll see in a moment why I do this. Let, let's move the gap a bit down. We really don't need much, just a little bit as example. It just has to be a gap there. And okay, let's do the same here maybe. I know one millimeter is not a, not a lot, but it looks like a lot in detail. Okay, great. So next step, we go into 3D and we look for our morph element. There we go. So now we use this morph element and I want to extend this and I want to, see it depends how many, uh, the gap between the tiles, so I like a 10 millimeter. Okay, so the gap between the two tiles will be 10 millimeter. We go and have a quick look if it cuts correctly. Yeah, see, no, that's all good. Great, so this obviously is a cutting element, so you gotta put this on a cutting element layer. So let's put this on a cutting element layer. Okie dokie, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I got the wrong one, that's why I thought so. Okay, cutting elements. Great, so if I go now down to my 2D, there it is. It's a bit hard to see. If you can't see it, it's hiding behind. Select it and move it up to the top. Okay, so that's just a drawing, so it's like drawing sheet layers. There you go, so now it's at the top. Okay, now before we distribute them around here, sweep them around, there's one more thing we have to do. Gotta select this and we have to change the color of it. You will see in a moment why. So let's just change this one to paint one because that is the um, that is our tile. And what we have to do also is changing those two faces here. It's a bit hard because it's so small. Okay, now you click on this face here and there you want to change that one okay click the face and i want to have this on paint three okay that's our cement color and we do the same here you click there and on the face yes not all of it paint three okay great now we're ready so we go back here and we start sweeping them around I want my tile to be roughly 350 millimeters, so let's sweep it and we do increment 350, 10 mil. Let's make it 360. Uh, spread 360, great. And we gotta pick a path, rotate to path, that's important. So we click OK and you have to try to select now the spline. And you can see sometimes it's a bit hard. So if you can't quite pick it in a moment, you know, just turn the wall layer off. You can see I've got some problems. So I escape, click the wall, and we just turn this layer off for now. Do it again, open that tool, set it all the same, and now we can easily pick that. So pick the path where it sweeps around, and we go click there, and now it should start sweeping at 360. There you go. Now you will see at the end, it won't fit exactly. I mean, you'll be extremely lucky. Yes, it's way too close, obviously. So let's do this again, go all the way here. So you pretty much, yeah, have to take up. So what we're using, just click. And now we got to count those. And it's not as hard as I think because we got a nice tool here. It's called Edit Selection Set. It's all selected, 73, there you go. Cancel. And let's undo this step and we open that tool again. Now 73, so what I do is we distribute this time and I calculate 73 because we were one there already, so let's make it 72. Those settings are the same. Great, pick the path, we go there, and now you see it's distributing them nicely around all the way and you just go to the very end. Oh, I should have had minus one, pretty sure. Yeah, minus one, very important. Do this again. There we go, so sweep it around. And now I can go to the very end. Oh, come on, gotta zoom in a bit. 
Ah, oh, does not let me do this. Let's have another try. Over here. Ooh, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? Okay, they go to that line, that's fine. Now you can see they got all exactly the same distance in between. I select this little one here, we're missing, and we group this. All right, let's go into 3D. And obviously we only have that one on and show all the layers. Great, now we use solid element operation. Open this and we just select the targets. Okay, you select the operate elements and now subtraction. And now that's very important why I changed the color of the cutting element because I want to say inherit from operate. So it will place now the material from the cutting element onto the target element wherever it cuts. So let's do execute and see what happens. Right, so we take this one, select, turn it off. And that's how we did this right. Zoom in a bit. Turn around. Yeah, you can see in between. Nice, cut perfectly. And the tile, by the way, if you zoom in a bit further, because the cutting element was on paint one tile color. So on the side here, it stayed the tile color and a uh, cut cement color. How good is that? That looks great. Now the next step is let's add a slab. So I can close this now. And we will add a slab there. Now for this, it's quite simple. You go in here. Actually, no, let's make do one outside first. I want to see how that looks. And we cut this off now see that's not a bit you have to cut this off with a spline because they're all pieces here by the way let's just do export for now I don't need the cutting elements anymore now to do use the magic wand we can see it's it it will not yeah you can see it will not do it so what we do is we take the spline and we copy and paste so you copy paste it straight over original location all right, so I've got another spline there, select, and all I got to do is now, let's move this out to, with this tool to there. All right, great. So leave the spline on, and this one is on floor layer, that's fine. And we turn off the other layer. It's just easier. So the wall layer turn off. There we go. Select this. You'll be on the slab and you hold your magic wand tool. Okay, let's have a look. So this should be right there. And that did not work. Beautiful, I wonder why. Let's do that again. See, it's good sometimes in my tutorials that sometimes it doesn't work and I have to redo this. So, slab. And it should really, see it shouldn't draw the floor, it should cut a hole. Let's try this again. I have a feeling it's not cutting a hole. Yeah, cut this time. Oh, I have an old one in there, that's why. That was stupid, wasn't it? All right, so export. So what we have at the moment here is this. There we go, that looks pretty good. And now to add a slab down here, I've got this on paint two. So let's go back into the slab tool and we put this on paint two. And thickness, let's make it 200. And to sea level, it's a bit lower, but let's make it roughly two. I'll move it up anyway after. And we should be able to it doesn't quite want to do it. So we have to do the same thing down here with our, um, actually, it's, no, this should be fine. In 3D, it didn't want to work, ah, Never mind. All right, see, there's now our pool floor 
and obviously it's much easier you go just to the section and move this down so take this one all the way down here and we do again export beautiful this looks pretty good now it's very detailed it's nice and round and we can add now a bit of water and we can add a pool stair pool stair is actually a nice one we got one here as an object there you go you know whatever setting you put in you can make the different length and we just click ok and place this in here so roughly there let's have a look where it went yep there you go yeah you can move that a little bit around but i think for now for this tutorial that's fine so that's our pools there and now to add water all you have to do is really you select this okay and we drag a copy up so just drag a copy let's make the water right there and we obviously will go to i don't even know if i got a water well you know let's make a glass for this exercise just make a glass and the water maybe make it 10 mil thick there we go we should drag it up a little bit more i can do this in section two but i like working in 3d there you go and we have a little bit of a gap at the moment so what you have to do is we extend the water with this tool here there you go okay there you go you got the perfect pool sweeping around quite detailed water in it and if you render this up this will look right great on your project i hope you enjoyed this little quick coffee tip and i see you back next time bye for now